everybody. Welcome to this edition of Each Camp Sports Talk. Tom Nappy here. And just a few moments, we'll be joined by Andy Barron for our week one NFL picks. But first, here are the latest Hiller happenings. Last year, Hopkins and Hiller's Boys Varsity Soccer had an incredible season, finishing regular season play with 12 wins, 2 losses, and 4 ties. The Hillers captured the 8th seed in the Division II State Tournament and went on to take down 25th seeded Duxbury, 24th seeded North Attleboro, and 1st seeded Bedford on the road to advance to the Division II State Semifinals versus 5th seeded Wakefield. After an incredible back and forth match, and a couple of overtime periods, the game was forced into a shootout where the Hillers fell just short. Hopkinton ended their incredible season with 15 wins, 3 losses, and 4 ties. The Hillers are substantially younger this year after losing several seniors to graduation, but have a bunch of strong, up-and-coming talent, and this year's captains are optimistic. My name's Zach Boschman, and I play midfield and forward. My name's Owen Champlin, and I play defender. My name's Timothy Zakharov, and I play midfield. My name's Jack Graziano, and I play midfield. The team's looking really good. We got a lot of really talented players. Right now, it's just like figuring out where we're all going to play, what formation we're going to use, but practice has been good, high intensity. Can't complain. So do you have any... Um personal goals or team goals you want to accomplish this season? Um, I know as a team, we, we, we want to do really well. We want to win the TVL again and have another good run in the playoffs. Great. So I've been actually watching from the sideline for a lot of it, but I've noticed that we had a lot of progression from Algonquin to like uh, Framingham. So I think the team is looking really good. We have a really young team, but I think we have a lot of talent. Battling on an injury? Yes. I sprained my ankle. Uh, okay. You going to be back for the uh, opener? No. Not the opener, but I think the game's next week. I'll be okay. Excellent. Uh, do you have any uh, goals, personal goals or team goals you want to accomplish this year? Yeah, as everyone says, to win the TVL and to make a good run in the playoffs. It was really fun last year. Um, I'm feeling great for this season. You know, I'm really excited. I think that the team's looking great. Lots of progression already. Uh, the pieces are starting to click together. I got high hopes for this year. All right, and uh, what are your uh, personal team goals this year? Um, as they said, you know, I'd love to win the TVL, make another deep run in the playoffs, um, you know, take it one game at a time, not get too ahead of ourselves. Yeah. Uh, the team mostly working right now is where people play, like they said before. But I think we'll only keep getting better throughout the season, especially because we play a different formation than most of the kids here play in club. So as they adapt to that, the team just keeps getting better. All right, you got any goals this season? Uh, I would love to win the TVL again, and hopefully we can make it deep and maybe win the championship. All right, I'm going to have you all answer this one. Is there an opponent that you're most looking forward to playing this season? Uh, Holliston and Ashland both, honestly. They're always good rivals, good teams to play against. I'm excited to play Dover Sherborne because a lot of my club teammates are on that team, and I think they're, they're going to be a really good matchup for us. Head coach Garrett Sawyer enters his 21st season as Hiller head coach and is excited about this season's group. Yeah, we've had a good couple of weeks. I got some good scrimmages against uh, tough competition. We have a lot of new guys on the team this year, a lot of young players that have been on varsity before. Uh, and so they are starting to acclimate to the level of play at the varsity level. Uh, and we've made a lot of progress. And uh, we're looking forward to starting to put it on the field with games this week. And uh, what are some of the things you've been working on in these early practices? I just think uh, the big thing is getting used to playing together as a group because there's so many new players. Uh, certainly uh, speed of play. Um, technical ability, uh, I think those have been a big focus, and, and some tactics as well. All right, and you got any uh, goals you'd like to see this team accomplish this season? No, I just think every year I think it's the same, that we have a really uh, positive team culture and we maximize our potential. You know, it, because we have so many new players this year, it's hard to tell um, where we might end up, 
but if we get a sense that we're we're playing well together, um, we're playing hard, um, we're playing together as a team uh, every time we step on the field, and we'll, we'll see how the uh, results turn out. And if I recall correctly, I believe a lot of these guys were at uh, in JV together, and they're they're a very strong group last year. Um, so uh, since they already play together, it must be a little bit easier of a transition, even though there are a lot of new faces on the roster. Yeah, I don't know. I think it's it's a totally new mix. Um, and I think because the varsity speed of play and physicality is so different that uh, I think it's been eye-opening for a few of the players the last couple of weeks. The, the kinds of things they might be able to get away with with the ball at their feet um, at the JV level or wherever they're playing year-round. Uh, can't do that anymore. So uh, there's been a lot of that adjustment. And it looks like you got uh, some good leadership this year. Can you tell us about your captains? Yeah, you know, uh, all of them have kind of been through the system for a couple of years. Uh, they know what our expectations are in terms of character, commitment, um, the team culture, the work ethic at practice, um, you know, respecting each other, respecting our, our opponents. They know those values. They've lived through the process. So I have no doubt they're going to be able to kind of pass that positive culture onto this, this next group of kids that are coming in. The Hillers open their season on September 3rd in Norwood and have their first home game on Thursday, September 5th versus Dedham. Both games are at 4.30 p.m. Last year, both Hiller boys and girls cross country won the TVL large title. The boys team finished 5-0. During the regular season, the girls finished 4-1, and, and both the boys and girls teams won the all-TVL meet to cap off the regular season. This season, a number of great athletes are back, and the Hillers are looking for a repeat. Boys head coach Laura McKenzie and girls head coach Gene Can have the teams training together to get ready for this season's meets. Yeah, um, I like the team this year. The team's looking really strong. Got a lot of young kids on the team. Good future for the team. A lot of young talent. And uh, I guess we're looking to accomplish another uh, undefeated season, another win at TVLs. We've won it the last last four of the five years, I think. So we're looking to win again. Um, I think Steven pretty wrapped, up, wrapped it up pretty well, but uh, I just want to have everyone be a good community. We're going to have a good atmosphere and have a fun time while we do well, hopefully. Right, is there any uh, meet that you're particularly looking forward to? Any opponent? Uh, maybe uh, Ashland. Definitely uh, always put up some good competition. And Westwood, they put up some good competition, but definitely the TVL meet, definitely one to look forward to. Everyone, it's always a good meet. All right, and what are some of the things that you work on uh, in these early practices to get ready for the uh, season? Definitely just getting some good quality long runs in, getting uh, get building up like a nice base, and getting some good long runs in that you can't do later in the season that will like burn you out. So getting to know everyone, all the new athletes, all the good freshmen, getting to just meet everyone. I guess, yeah. Yeah, just get to know everyone. Um, you put a lot of miles in the first few weeks just to kind of set a base and, you know, be ready for the season and prepare to be do well. And how are the new guys on the team looking? Um, they're looking very good this year. They uh, they definitely put their summer training in, which is always good to see. Um, it's gonna, I think they're going to be good. They're going to have a good uh, high school career. Good. I think we have a good team so far, and I think we have a lot of um, potential, especially in the younger grades, and we have a good group of girls this year. Yeah. Um, I mean, I think we're really good at running in a pack this year, especially like during the workouts, um, and the returning varsity is pretty good too. Um, we also had a bunch of girls that did mid-distance and track come and join the team this year who had, hadn't done cross country before, maybe came over from some other sports. So having some other girls um, that already have mileage under their belt, I think will be very helpful for this season. Excellent. And uh, what are some of the things that you're working on in these early practices to get ready for the season? I think right now we're working on getting our mileage up because we're so early in the season. Our season goes to like 
Thanksgiving time that right now we're just base building and then slowly but surely we'll do more and more speed work. So by the end of our seasons, we'll have better kicks at the end of our races. But right now it's mostly like base building and getting to a place where like some people on the team can't run three miles yet. So we're getting to the point where everyone is able to do that. Talk, talk about the uh, new girls on the team this year. How are they looking? Oh, they're looking great. I mean, I feel like this year we have a really good group of girls, not just like speed wise, but also just personality wise. I mean, everyone's so friendly. Um, it's really great to be able to run with a bunch of different people every day, which is something you don't really get in sprinting and track, which I really enjoy. Is there any specific opponent or meet that you're uh, most looking forward to? Um, I, will, I think that all of our seniors are most looking forward to our senior meet. Um, it's one of our like favorite meets uh, for everyone because it's just a fun celebration. But I think that the meet that um, we're like most looking forward to is probably Holliston just because they're our biggest competitor. Um, so it's just a good test of like how well we're doing and um, it's our hardest competition in the league. And do um, you have any uh, personal or team goals you'd like to accomplish? You all can answer this one. Um, I think seeing how close we can come to Holliston, elaborating off what Avery just said, because last year we only lost to them by one point, and for people that like don't know a lot about cross country, one point is like never seen before. Usually scores are like 10 to 15 points, so like the one point, and then we lost to them at two at TVLs, which is even greater because usually at big meets like a league meet, it can be somewhere between 20 and 30 points between opponents. So just seeing after they lost their top runner, um, who's now running in college, seeing what we can do against them will be definitely very interesting. Yeah, um, I'd say Holliston is definitely like a big one and then I think really just getting to know everyone on the team is something I'm really looking forward to. Um, yeah, I think I would just say that, like our team, like we are the cross country team really likes to be like a big community. So I think just one of our biggest goals is like making sure everyone is included and we like can all lean on each other for things. It's um, the teams are looking great. We have some great senior leadership. Uh, the girls are very senior heavy. The boys have a good mix of everything. We also have some very strong freshmen on both both sides. Um, so uh, so I, it's looking like a promising promising year for both. The weather has been pretty, pretty cooperated very well last week. It was beautiful. It was like the coolest first week we've ever had, yeah. I think. Yeah. And then this week we've had a few uh, the threat of thunder on Monday pushed us back and um, and then today's a little little tricky and yesterday was a little humid but it's nothing we're not used to so um, yeah okay. yeah I would say probably our smoothest first first yeah. week or so of um, of the last few years for sure mm -hmm. um, the kids came in trained really well I think mm -hmm. that's uh, most of the work for cross country is done over the summer so they've come in with a lot of miles under their belt and they're ready to go yeah so it's looking good Battling a B-back. Oh. <laughs> uh, do you have any uh, goals uh, for the teams uh, for the team this year? Uh, what do you think this, the teams are capable of? Well, for the, on the girls' side, um, we haven't won TVL the last few years. Holliston, uh, the last four years, has beaten us, um, both in the dual meet and when we've had the showcase. We didn't have it four years ago with COVID, but um, we've um, they've beaten us, and yet last year was very close. We were, it was one point, one point. I, one point in the dual meet and two points at the league meet, I believe, um, which is nothing in cross country. It's just one person and you're scoring, flip-flopping with one person in theirs. So um, so that part, uh, we we think we're ready this year. We never, I mean, they're a great team. Um, I don't want to discount anybody, and there are some other teams in the league that are looking good. Um, but our goal is always to try to win the league and to qualify for all state, um, which we've, we've done every year. And I see no reason we can't continue to do that so in place as high as possible at the, the divisional meet and hopefully top 10 at the all-state meet yeah and i think the boys are looking to win the tvl league again tvl large um they've won the last three no four four four, <laughs> four <laughs> no, five five years five I think, years yeah. and yes um so we're looking to do that again i think mm -hmm. um you never know what the competition is out there um you know we have some strong returning runners and some some new runners who will contribute so I think we have a, a good shot at the league and same divisional um, and placing as high as we can you know it's a tough league a tough um, division but mm -hmm. we'll see what we can do and it looks like both teams have some uh, good experienced captains this year can you talk about the uh, captains on your team this year yeah sure. I have um, 
all three of my captains have experience. Um, uh, Avery and Bridgie were both captains for cross country last year, and Josie um, was a captain for track last spring. So, um, so yeah, they know what they're doing. They know um, they know all the drills well, and they're they're very good motivators and very good at including everybody. So they've uh, it's been pretty seamless having them step in this year. Yes, and I have two returning captains, um, both seniors were captains last year, Logan and Steven. So um, I think it's always helpful to have them for a second year. Yeah, I think we are. We have great leadership, and I think um, that's certainly going to help us, help us this year. So both the boys and girls cross country team have their first meet on Wednesday, September 18th at Norwood at 4:30 p.m. Hello, everybody, and welcome into this segment of HCAM Sports Talk. Tom Nappy here, and we are joined by Andy Barron to do some week one NFL picks. Andy, how are you? Good, Tom. How are you? Just before we came on the air, we were saying how I can't believe it's already time for week one. Ah, uh, time just flies, doesn't it? It does. It does. It, it just, uh, it's here. We're ready to go. Absolutely. The summer flew by, and we are ready for NFL football. Uh, pretty good, uh, I guess they call it week zero of college football just took place. It was some uh, decent games. Uh, that uh, Miami blowout over Florida was a little shocking, I must say. Didn't expect uh, that. And then um, the Sunday night game between uh, LSU and USC was a very good game. So uh, I like uh, getting started off with some college before you get into NFL. It's nice. Kind of eases you into it. It does. I also saw that there was a pretty big crowd at the UMass uh, Eastern Michigan game uh, this past weekend, too. Um, yes. I saw yeah. that. Um, it looked like a decent crowd over there. Well, it's good to see some of these smaller programs are, are getting bigger crowds at games. You're starting to see that in a lot of these schools, like especially like Holy Cross and UMass. Um, you know, BC usually draws a pretty good crowd, but um, you're definitely seeing some changes. I mean, of course, the schools in the South. They're always going to draw. They 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 they're sold out for probably the next thirty years. But I mean, it is good to see some smaller programs are starting to get bigger crowds to games. Absolutely. Well, uh, why don't we get right into it? Week one NFL picks. We got Thursday night football, the Chiefs ring ceremony game, and they will uh, be taking on the Baltimore Ravens. So the Ravens have to watch the Chiefs get their rings on Thursday night football. That should be a great battle. Baltimore is looking very good this year. They did well in the draft. And, of course, uh, they added a whole lot to their running game with Derrick Henry. So they are looking much better. Andy, who do you got? Thursday night football, Baltimore at Kansas City. Tom, this is a tough pick because, if you recall, last year the Chiefs lost to Detroit on opening night. Um, so a part of me wants to take the Ravens. But I just can't bet against the Chiefs. Um, I'm going with the Chiefs here. I do think it's going to be a good game, but I am interested. You just said about Derrick Henry. Is he the game changer for the Ravens? Because if the Ravens go in here and win this game and win convincingly, that's going to tell me something. Because now there's a chance that Kansas City will have to go back to Baltimore again for this year. This very well could be the AFC Championship game. It's a very, very distinct possibility. Um Will it be enough? That's the thing. I still think it comes down to Lamar Jackson. Can he finally get over the hump? We know how good Mahomes is. Um, I think this is a, a field goal game, and I am going to go with the Chiefs. Absolutely, yeah. I'm going with the Chiefs as well. I don't think it'll be a blowout. I think this is going to be like a three-point game, uh, probably like a 27-24 kind of game. I could, think It could be the game of the week. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a great matchup to get the season uh, underway. And then in our second game, we go to Friday night. We have a random Friday night game in Brazil. Green Bay at Philly in Brazil. This should be interesting. Hopefully, sure. uh, hopefully the players stay safe over there. I, they're having a rough time over there right now. Yeah, uh, well, go ahead. I mean, they, they, they sports over in Brazil is just – you see what soccer is like over there. And now they're bringing football over there. It should be a, a pretty – it should be a it, sh it should be a sold out crowd, I, I would think, uh, going into this game. It'll be it'll be interesting, that's for sure. 
Uh, yeah, I'm curious. Uh, you know, it is uh, one of those Peacock app games, so a lot of people aren't going to be able to watch it. But right. it's a good matchup. Green Bay versus Philly in Brazil. Who do you got, Andy? I got Green Bay. I- I'm I'm all in on Jordan Love. This guy is the real deal, Tom. I, I think uh, – you know, he nearly took them into San Francisco and won in the divisional round last year. I think Philadelphia is on their way down. Uh, Nick Sirianni totally, totally lost control of that team last year. It is a new year, but I just think the Packers are a better team. I think they are going to be right in the thick of things in the NFC as well. All right, I like it. But I'm going to go Philly. Uh, Philly looked very strong in the preseason. And I know it's the preseason, can't – you know, judge too much on it, but they looked really strong. And I think they're on a mission this year after falling on their face and what was it? Week seven, week eight last year. Uh, so I'm going to go Philly on this one. So our, the first pick we have against each other will be a Friday night in Brazil matchup. Now, now the question I have for you is since Steve and Jared on here, are we, we going to make their picks for them? Or uh, I will put them on the site. If we remember, yeah, we should. <laughs> We'll just we'll just pick up we'll just we'll just pick all the underdogs see how they do this week right <laughs> right absolutely yeah. if they get their picks in time that's what they're getting they're getting all the underdogs well have Mike and Bob make their picks for them that's what yes <laughs> no because he'd win all right uh, we're getting into the Sunday at one o'clock games Pittsburgh at Atlanta uh, I think Pittsburgh kind of looked like a mess in the preseason and they they have a uh, you know Russell Wilson. And uh, what's his face from Chicago? Justin Fields. Justin Fields. They both did not look great. I don't know. I'm going to go Atlanta in this one. Um, I think Atlanta is excited about some new uh, pieces they're bringing in. This should be a close game. It's probably going to be one of those really weird games. But give me Atlanta. They're the home team, so I'll go with them. Who do you got? I'm going to go with Atlanta as well. I think they've had some really uh, interesting pieces. Of course, Kirk Cousins. Kyle Pitts is really, really good. Matt Judon, former Patriot player down there, he's got something to prove this year. Yeah, I think you're right. I think this is going to be a weird game. There's always weird games in Atlanta. Like it's just always a, a, a weird. It's never a a, a, a um, consistent game with the Falcons. It's always you never know what you're going to get out of them. But I agree, the Steelers just don't look right right now. But they always seem to get it together. But I, I think this is a tough spot for them this week. It's probably going to be a th- another three point game. Come right down to the wire. Yeah. Yeah, I think so. This will be a close one. It'll be like one of those 19 to 16 games or something like that. Probably a field goal game, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Arizona at Buffalo. Uh, I can't bring myself to go against Buffalo at home. I'm going Buffalo in this one. And um, Kyler Murray's back for Arizona, which is a huge plus, but I don't trust him much. So give me Buffalo. Who do you got? You and I were talking about this before we came on the air, and I this is a tough spot for Arizona. You're going all the way to the East Coast, a 1 o'clock start. It's pretty much a 10 o'clock start out there. That's a raucous crowd in Buffalo. Um, the Bills are, again, can they finally get over the hump this year? Um, I'm not really sure, but they're not going to lose this game. I, I think they win going away by probably two touchdowns. They're too explosive. They have too many, too many yeah, rounds. I agree. Um, yeah, I mean, they're going to miss um... – Digs a little bit, but That's I, a big think, loss. I think they'll be all right. Yeah. All right. Tennessee at Chicago. <laughs> this is probably your dumpster matchup of the week. Um, Andy, who do you got in this one? Tom, surprisingly, I've been impressed with Chicago in the preseason. I mean, Caleb Williams, whether you, whether you think the guy is legit or not, the Bears finally have a quarterback. This is their future. There's no doubt about it. Tennessee, I don't know who are they even starting at quarterback in Tennessee. They've lost Derrick Henry. This team is just it just looks lost right now. But I think there's a lot of excitement around the Chicago team, and I like the Bears this week. Well, I am going to agree with you. I'm going with Bears as well because of the Caleb Williams factor. Uh, he looked very good in the preseason, and yes, the Titans are an absolute mess. Uh, I don't know who they have starting. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna try to look it up here. Uh, yeah, I don't even know where the quarterback is. Oh, let's see. All what's, right, what's who this? who who is the Titans quarterback? Oh, they don't have one. Okay, is it Will uh, Will somebody? Oh, Will Will Levis. 
Le- well, Levis is, is, is it Levis? Is, is that it Levis is? or Levy? He came yeah. in last year, and he was okay. Yeah, Tennessee just does, does not look good at all. No, no. The, um, and they they lost, uh, you know, Derrick Henry, which is huge for them. And yeah, that's not going to go well for well, them. Yeah, AJ Brown. They've lost a lot of players that have left there. They're just not a. Uh, it doesn't seem like a destination for people to want to go play in Tennessee. I don't even see their quarterbacks listed, so maybe they're that bad. Wow. <laughs> they're not even listed. Terrible. How do you no, I, know I don't know why they wouldn't be on the roster. What do we, we need Steve. Oh, there we Steve. go, Levis. Levis and Mason Rudolph is their backup. Ooh, yeah, that's not that not good. Not, not going to be a good week for Tennessee. No. Uh, this next game we probably don't have to discuss much. New England at Cincinnati. I'm going Bengals. New England, uh, they're not even starting Drake Bay. They're starting Brissett. They don't have any weapons. Uh, their defense should be decent again this year, should be good. It'll probably keep them into the game somewhat. But Cincinnati just has too many weapons. I think Bengals in a blowout in this one. Andy, who you got? Yeah, really not much to discuss either, Tom. It's Bengals in a blowout. We're just simply not good. The Bengals are better. I mean, they, they just they got Joe Burrow. The Bengals are are going to be in the mix in the AFC too. I think they're going to as long as Joe Burrow stays healthy. Yeah, you know the Patriots might keep this close a little early, but it's probably going to end up being like a thirty-four to ten game. We just don't. We we don't. I would be surprised if they even get closer than that. I just this has loss written all over it. It's gonna it's gonna be a long day for the for the Patriots. It'll be a long season for the Patriots. Yeah, long season yeah. for the Patriots, but uh, the only. I, again, it's just um, no. I mean, I don't even know if you'd want to start Drake May this week either. But the, what did I say before we we came on the show? There's there's just no buzz around this team whatsoever, no. and there should be because you drafted a th- you drafted Drake May the third. Gerard Mayo's your new coach. I mean, a new era begins here, but th- they just did not really do anything to try and make this team better. No, they didn't. Um... You figure they would have added a weapon or two. You know, you bring in a new quarterback. You draft him with the third pick in the draft. You figure you'd surround him with something, but they didn't. So I just think it's going to be a mess. Uh, here's yeah. an interesting matchup in, an inter- in what should be an interesting division, the AFC South. Houston at Indy. You got Anthony Richardson returning for Indy, and he's going against a – Restacked Houston team. Uh, Houston had a lot of weapons uh, this offseason. Andy, who do you got in this one? I'm taking Houston here. I'm, I'm buying in on Houston. D'Amico Ryan's this guy. This guy's done a great job of this team. He's got the quarterback and CJ Stroud. They got the receivers. Uh, this is a team that I really think can make a run at Kansas City. I'm not saying they're going to beat the Chiefs, but they will. They will cause some problems in the AFC. Uh, they have completely turned this franchise around. They were. A, a laughing stock just a few years ago. I think the Colts have improved, but I don't think they're better than the Texans. I think the Texans are are a legit AFC team. This will be a competitive game, but the Chiefs will pull away late. I mean, sorry, the Texans will pull away late. Yes, I agree. I'm going Houston as well. C.J. Stroud was great last year. He led him to the playoffs in a very unexpected year. They added some good pieces to their running game, like Joe Mixon. Um, and also Cam Akers is uh, on that running back squad, as well as Damian Pierce. Uh, and they got Diggs for uh, a receiver, and they're going to have him along with Xavier Hutchinson uh, and Tank Dell, Nico Collins. So this team, they're getting better and better, and I am totally buying it on Houston this year. I think if there's any team in the AFC, perhaps, that could compete with Kansas City. It's probably this Texans team. And let's not forget, they have a really good defense, too. Should be a fun season for the Texans fans, no doubt. Uh, all right, Jacksonville at Miami. Uh, I Jacksonville looked pretty good in the preseason, but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with the home team factor here. Uh, I'm going to go with Miami. I think the Dolphins probably on a mission. They play really good at home. So give me Miami. Who do you got? I'm actually going to go with Jacksonville. And here's why. The Dolphins, they struggle with the Jaguars. This is notor- notoriously has been a, a problem for the Dolphins. 
Um, and it's still a, 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 another Florida team, even though they're a Northern Florida team. But, you know, I just don't buy into the Dolphins for some reason. I don't know what it is. Um, this is going to be a, a close game, but I do think the Jaguars are going to pull it out. I think they're going to rebound this year. But can Trevor Lawrence stay healthy? That's the key. Because if you look who you got behind you, it's Mac Jones. That would not be good for the Jaguars um, if Trevor Lawrence no. gets hurt. Although but, they, were, they were raving about him in the preseason. Yeah, well, <laughs> well I guess – We'll see the Jaguars in, in London, I think, in October. So we'll, we'll see. But uh, no, I, I think the, I think the Jags are going to pull this out. I think this is going to be an interesting game um, because you never know what you're going to get out of the Dolphins. Like, I mean, two is a good quarterback, but has he reached his ceiling? I'll tell you what. Talk- take the over in this game. I got to. I got to. Oh, it's going to be a high-scoring affair. I think you're I right. Think, I, I think it's going to be hot. Though. It's probably going to be over 100 degrees down in Miami. I mean. Oh yeah. Brutal, easy, brutal. We, oh yeah. yeah. Well, at least I think last time these two teams met up, a hurricane moved the game. So at least that's not going to happen this time. Yeah, they, you never know what you're going to get in Miami in September. I mean, how many times have the Patriots gone down there week one and it's just been it's been atrocious? Thank oh, God yeah. we're not going down there this. But, right. You know. uh, let's see. Uh, Carolina at New Orleans. I got no faith in the Panthers. I think, along with the Patriots, they'll be the worst teams in the league. Give me the Saints. Who do you got? Saints. Carolina's bad. I mean, they're, I agree with what you just said. Carolina, New England, and probably Tennessee are playing for the number one pick for 2025. I think Tennessee's going to be a step above Carolina, though, because – uh, Levis wasn't that bad. He's okay. And they got his, at least a pretty good defense in Tennessee. Uh, Minnesota at the – here's another team that should be uh, fighting for that number one pick, the New York Giants. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm going Vikings. Giants literally have nothing left, nothing to offer. Uh, give me Minnesota. Minnesota doesn't have much to offer either, but I think the Giants might be actually worse than they were last year. Yeah. I'm guessing yeah. you have Minnesota too. Yeah, I have Minnesota, but now who's going to be their quarterback this week? Because now that JJ McCarthy is out. Well, um, well, they, that's a good question. They, yeah. They, <laughs> wasn't it surprising? Uh, who had the surprise draft pick? Oh, wasn't it Atlanta? They, when they took Michael Penix, yeah. Because they have, they, they, Gave all that money to last year's the cousins. quarterback, the Cousins. Right. So Cousins is in Atlanta now. And yeah. The Vikings probably would like to, to have Kirk Cousins right now, now that JJ McCarthy's out for the year. So yeah. it's probably going to be Sam Darnold. That's right. Oh, yeah. Well, they should still have enough to beat. The Giants are not a good football team. They're a bad team. Um, this might be it for Brian Dayball. I, mean, I don't know if he's going to make it another year, but uh, he clearly does not want Daniel Jones. I mean, so it's Minnesota's not going to be great. They'll no, be, they'll be towards the bottom of the barrel. But but they should win this game. Yes, uh, you know it. It won't surprise me if it's close because I think it is two bad teams. Yeah, uh, but for the Giants, yeah. uh, their quarterback is probably going to be Daniel Jones. They got Jones. They got Drew Locke and my boy Tommy DeVito. Oh, you want to see Tommy DeVito back oh, yeah. in there. That, that's what you want. <laughs> so does all of New Jersey and New York. So does all of New Jersey and New York, by the way. <laughs> he might play because Daniel Jones might get hurt or they're just going to be so bad that they're they're going to, you know. Well, I, there's a 50-50 chance of Jones getting hurt at some point. All right, moving on to the 4 o'clock games. Las Vegas Raiders at the Chargers. Um, I'm going to take, uh, Harbaugh's chargers in this one. Uh, the Raiders are kind of, uh, in rebuilding mode as well. They have a lot of, uh, new pieces. The chargers defense looks stacked. Uh, you know, Herbert's back. So I think they'll be ready to go. And I think, uh, Harbaugh starts off his, uh, chargers career on a good note. So give me the chargers. Who do you got? 
I'm taking the Chargers as well. I mean, look, I think anything is update an update from Brandon Staley. I mean, that was uh, the Chargers cannot get any worse than they were last year. Um, I will be interested to see how the Raiders do this year with Antonio Pierce as their coach. I thought they they finished up strong last year, so that will be will be interesting. But I do think the Chargers are gonna, are going to win this game week one. Uh, it'll it'll be uh, it'll be tough for the Raiders to pull this one out, but it'll be close because it's a divisional game week one. Yeah, yeah, I think it will be close, and I think the Raiders uh, will be pretty good. Antonio Pierce did a great job last year with the defense, uh, so I think they could possibly be somewhat competitive. I don't expect them to be a top tier team, but maybe in the middle somewhere. All right, Denver at Seattle. Who do you got in this one? I'll let you. Pick I'm going it. with Seattle. Um, now there's a lot of hype with Bo Nix starting, but this is a tough spot going into Seattle, tough place to play. Um, I don't see the Broncos winning this game. I, I think they, they still have a lot of holes on their team. I think Seattle, um, uh, again, one of the hardest places to play in the NFL and you're bringing a rookie quarterback in there, tough spot. I think the, I think the, the, uh, Seahawks win pretty, pretty easily. All right. Yeah. I think this is a, uh, Pretty tough situation for uh, Bo Nix and the Denver Broncos. But Seattle, I do think, uh, will take a step down this year. Uh, Geno Smith, I mean, he had a very good couple of years or a very good first year, so-so second year. So I do think Seattle takes a bit of a step down. And uh, also a little bit worried about uh, – Seattle's weapons, uh, they didn't really add too much. It is a tough place to play. You know what? I'm going to I'm gonna go with the upset here. I'm going Denver in a shocker. Right. That'll be go my week one shocker pick. You know, they added Bobo in the draft. That's about it. They got Metcalf and Lockett coming back. LaVesca Chenault. All right. Decent, but I don't know. I, I got a feeling about Denver. They looked awesome in the preseason. All right, Dallas at Cleveland. Who do you got? I'm going with Cleveland. I think the Browns are going to win this game. I don't believe in Dallas. I just don't. I just don't. How many more times are we going to keep talking about Dak Prescott and how Dallas, this is the year for Dallas. This is finally the year. No, it's not the year. They just now, I know they signed, we signed CD Lamb, but this team cannot win in the postseason. They just can't. It really doesn't even matter what they do in the regular season. But um, the the Browns, uh, the Browns are going to win this game. All right. Well, I'm going against you on this one too because while you're right, Dallas absolutely cannot win in the postseason. This is Week One, and they're usually pretty good in Week One games. So give me Dallas and what should be a close one. Uh, but this game could certainly go either way. Don't really know what to expect, but Dallas, they usually come out pretty good in the first few weeks, so I'll go Cowboys here. All right, Washington at Tampa Bay. Uh, the game's in Tampa. Uh, I think Tampa's going to uh, – they're returning most of their pieces. I think they'll uh, be pretty good this year. I got to go Tampa here. Who do you got? I'm taking Washington. I, I think they're gonna. I think the, they're gonna be a good team this year. And I think Tampa will too. This should be a really good game. Um, I think there's a lot of hype around Washington this year, especially with uh, Jaden Daniels. They they finally it seemed like they got they're putting a, a team together. This could be a a field goal touchdown game, and I I like Washington in the upset. Yeah, if I'm a betting man, there's a lot of games that I would stay away from this week. That's for sure because the. It, Usually in week one, you have an idea who's going to win, who's not, but a lot of new uh, faces on a lot of new, uh, a lot of different teams this year. And is, Brady was, announced, is he announcing this game? Is Brady announcing this game? He, I think he is. Yeah. I believe it makes they said, sense. You know, makes yeah. sense. Right. Yeah. But I can't go against my boy, Baker Mayfield. So he had a good year last year. He had a great season. And, and just think of it. I mean, Brady leaves Tampa. Baker Mayfield becomes the starter and still go to the title game. Yeah. Still managed to get him to the playoffs. Pretty unbelievable. Yeah. 
All right, moving on to Sunday night football. We got Rams at Detroit. Uh, this game gave me a hard time, but I got to go Detroit. Uh, they're coming off a good season last year. I hate a lot of decisions, a lot of game decisions that their head coach makes at times. I think he goes for it too often and takes too many risks. But uh, the Rams, they don't have much to bring to the table. and I think they're going to have a hard time in front of a rowdy crowd, Detroit. Give me the Lions in this one. Who do you got? I'm taking the Lions as well, but this is going to be a good game. The Rams can score. I mean, their offense is really good. Um, but I think the Lions, you know, again, becoming a very tough place to play up there in Detroit. Jared Goff, again, he's rejuvenated his career. I mean, he literally almost took the Lions to the Super Bowl last year. And I think they're still going to be really, really good this year. This th Take the over on this game because it's going to be a lot of points scored. Yes, absolutely. All right. Uh, you said Lions, right? Sorry, I got the strike. Lions, yep. Okay, I, no, that's, no, I'm taking the Lions. Not not many times I take the Lions, but they're 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 a good team. They, well, I mean, good. hey, last year, I mean, they went to the NFC Championship, so no denying that. I think they'll be competitive again this year. Uh, will they get be back? tough with Green Bay in their division? Yeah. Green Bay is the up and comer in that NFC North, no doubt. And Chicago, so yeah. Yep, Chicago. The NFC, right. North, the NFC North may be very competitive ah, this year. It's a good point. That division is going to be really strong. Uh, I think Minnesota, uh, yeah, Minnesota is probably going to have the rough deal in that division. Because uh, Chicago, I mean, if Caleb Williams is everything that they think he is, look out. Bears are going to be a contender. Yeah. Well, a nice easy one for Monday Night Football. Jets at 49ers. I'm going, oh, well, it is Aaron Rodgers for the Jets, but still, I'm going 49ers. Yeah. 49ers here, too. The Jets don't have enough to go in San Francisco. And the 49ers are still a Super Bowl uh, you know, caliber team. Um, they have pretty much most of their, their – uh, they just got Brandon Ayuk back as well. This is a tough spot for the Jets. Now, I think the Jets will be, will be better, but – I just don't think they're on the 49ers level. Yeah, I mean, if, if someone could bring the Jets to the 49ers level, it is Aaron Rodgers. Uh, but tough place to pull, tough uh, spot. First game of the season in San Francisco against a really good 49ers team. I have a hard time believing that Aaron Rodgers with his hopefully first full game as a New York Jet. But he's going to be able to pull this one off. And I heard there was all kinds of off-season drama in Jets camp as well. What else do you expect, right? And then the other thing, too, is Aaron Rodgers has historically struggled against the 49ers in his career, even when he was playing up in Green Bay. Um, but I don't know. I mean, the Jets might keep this close for a little bit, but I just think that the 49ers, and again, they got McCaffrey, they got Samuel, Brock, Brock Purdy. I mean. Of course, that defense is just ridiculous. Oh. Fred Warner and those guys are just, again, the 49ers, they are still the team to beat in the NFC. They're still the team to beat in the NFC. I mean, Detroit and Green Bay are close, but I don't, still don't know if they have enough. They are the team to beat. Yes, I have to agree. Uh, 49ers, uh, I would say they're the favorite in the NFC until uh, determined otherwise. But they got their defense back. They got their weapons back for the most part. Uh, they're going to be a good team once again, probably one of the best. Well, there it is, week one of NFL picks. We'll try to get those on uh website as well and hopefully include Jared, Steves, and Mike's. We're doing it again in the NFL Challenge. We'll be picking every regular season game throughout the course of the season. But, uh, Andy, we got a few minutes left for final thoughts. Any final thoughts you got? Well, the, the summer is un, unofficially over, but uh, the Paralympic Games are going on in Paris right now. I had a chance to watch a little bit of it today. Really just amazing to see uh, how these athletes compete uh, at, at the highest level. And uh, the United States is doing well. I think they've taken over 20 medals so far, so they're doing, they're doing very well. and It's uh, competitive. And, uh, yeah, just getting ready to head back to, uh, to high school. And uh, high school football kicking off this week. A lot, a lot of big games uh, happening uh, this Friday night. So it's always a, a good and Thursday and Saturday. Now you got games pretty much th Thursday, Friday, Saturday. 
Um, but yeah, hard to believe we're in we're in September and uh, time to go back to school. <laughs> yep, absolutely. Labor Day weekend has come and gone, and now we are in the the midst of school season and football season. Here we go. Let the action begin. Uh, I got to give a big shout out. Scotty Sheffer won the FedEx Cup. Great win. He's had to overcome some controversy and adversity, adversity this uh, year. So pretty cool to see him win that FedEx Cup. What a tremendous golf season he has had. Seven majors. Uh, that's up there in the record books. Pretty unbelievable. Uh, and right now, he's the GOAT. He's the He's the greatest golfer in the world, Scotty Scheffler. So, uh, big win by him. And also, of course, do not forget, this week, Hopkinton Hiller Sports are live on HCAM. You can see our broadcast schedule on our website, hcam.tv. We'll be bringing you all the home games, or at least it's our goal to bring you all the home games. Should be a lot of fun, and be sure to check out all the fall team previews we did as well and you can find those on our website hcam.tv or our youtube page youtube.com slash hcam tv but andy thank you so much hope uh everybody out there has a fantastic week one may all your fantasy teams win and we'll catch you again next week with nfl picks on hcam sports talk Hiller Girls Volleyball is back in the gym and getting ready for the upcoming season. Last year, a younger Hiller team battled hard and finished the regular season 13-5 and and clinched a Division II state tournament spot. In the state tournament, the Hillers took down Westwood in the round of 32, three sets to one, before falling in a five-set match 3-2 to two in a very good and close battle with North Quincy to finish with 14 wins and 6 losses overall. Much of the Hiller roster returns this season and they have three experienced captains at the helm. I'm Elsa Woodbury and I'm an outside hitter. I'm Liv Kraza and I'm a DS slash libero. I'm Gabby Patty and I'm a setter. It's going pretty good. We only have three new players this year, and, I mean, we left off kind of, uh, or we started where we left off last playoff season since we had two pull-ups, so I think we're looking pretty good. Um, yeah, I agree. I think we're looking pretty good. I think the team has a lot of potential to go far this year, and we have a lot of big goals. Um, yeah, I agree with what um, those two said. The team has so much talent, and I know we all have so much passion and drive. And, um, yeah, we definitely have some big goals and aspirations this season. All right. And do you have uh, any uh, personal goals or team goals you'd like to accomplish this year? Um, state championship, TVLs, and, as always, the Sportsmanship Award. And what are your goals? Um, pretty much the same thing as Elsa. Um, just hopefully championship and TVLs. Yeah, I mean, the championship is always something we have on our mind, so we definitely want to um, reach that this year with the amount of potential and the 10 returners we have. Right, and uh, what are some of the things that you're working on in these early practices? I mean, right now we're really just working on kind of team dynamic, being able to work together, communicating, um, at least as setter, um, working on hitter, hitting and setting connection. Um, yeah, just mainly team bonding and um, just working together and hopefully finding out the issues. Um, yeah, everything that they said. Um, and we're really working on um, having good focus this year. Is there any uh, particular opponents that you're looking forward to playing? Um, Barnstable is one big one and Bellingham. I think um, Medfield and Westwood. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Medfield was our one opponent in the TVL we couldn't win against, so I'm excited to play them. All right, and how do you get along with the new group? They're great. We love all of them. We have three new ones, Kira Kelly, um, Addie Walls, and Sydney, um, and they're great. Yeah, they're awesome on the team, and especially Sydney. Working with her in the back row, I think she brings a lot of potential. 
Um, yeah, I agree. Working with Addie in the front row, Addie is amazing, and she's off to a great start already. Head coach Emma Sweetapple enters her third season as head coach and is excited about the talent returning this season. Uh, things are going well. This group is looking awesome. We have 10 returning players, three new players, so um, dynamic is going really well. Most of them have played together for at least one, if not two, some even three seasons. So um, we've got some big goals, and hopefully we can meet them this season. And uh, after, I believe the team was fairly young last year, so it must be nice now to have an experienced group. Yes, yeah, especially the last two seasons, we definitely had a lot of young talent. Um, so it's nice to have been developing that to prepare for this season where we have 10 returners, six seniors. So I think we've set ourselves up for a successful season. And you got some uh, good leadership with your captains. Can you talk about your captains this season? Yeah, so we have two senior captains, Elsa Woodbury and Liv Carraza, and then a junior captain, Gabby Patty. Um, all three have played the last two seasons. Gabby's been with us, and the other three um, I've actually been working with since they were freshmen when they started on JV with me and have been on varsity with me the last three seasons. So um, I think they've all shown their leadership capabilities throughout the years, and uh, they've really earned this spot this season. And, and uh, what do you guys the team concentrating on in these early practices? We're definitely focusing on our defense. I think that's where we need a little bit of work, so we're continuing to develop that and we had our uh, scrimmage against Lincoln Sudbury yesterday and we have our big Westboro scrimmage tomorrow so we're working through all the kinks so that we can be ready for our first in-season game next Wednesday. Uh, is there any uh, regular season opponent that you got marked down on that calendar that you're looking forward to playing? Based on last season I would say probably Medfield so we're really excited to meet them again on the court and hope that we can beat them. The Hillers open regular season play in Norwood on Wednesday, September 4th with a 5.15 p.m. start time. Hopkinton Hillers football is coming off a 5-6 and six season in which they fell just short of the playoffs. This year, they bring back some great talent and despite losing a few key starters to graduation, they were able to maintain a good core to the team heading in to the 2024-2025 season. All right, I'm Julian Rivard and I'm a quarterback. I'm Danny Bulos, I play a uh, linebacker. I am Jacob Desolitz, I play O-line and D-line. Uh, I'm Sean Baker, I play O-line and D-line. How's the, how are these uh, early practices going and uh, how, how do you think the team's looking so far this year? Yeah, we're doing good. We're stacking pretty good days on each other, so you know, we just got to keep moving. I think we're looking pretty good. Uh, a little more intensity than last year. Uh, I think last year we were not running to drills. I think this year we're a little more uh, antsy to get there. I think the team's looking good. Our intensity is good. We got lots of energy, physicality. I think we're going to be a good team this year. I think the team's looking good. Uh, we're focusing a lot just on just the basics and the fundamentals. Uh, try to get that down before we advance. What are some of the things you're working on in these early practices? Uh, just the basics, footwork, and all that stuff. Just make us better. Definitely uh, the intensity and just like physicality. And do you have any uh, personal or team goals you'd like to accomplish this season? Uh, TVL. Yeah. <laughs> You know, it's always a goal in our mind to get the TVL, so it's always on our head. TVL would be great, but uh, that Thanksgiving Day trophy would be real nice. Goals are to obviously win TVL and beat Holliston. Yeah, um, I think obviously TVLs, but also to stay together as a team throughout the whole season. I thought last year we kind of fell apart towards the end. And, uh, how's the camaraderie been with the new guys? It's good, you know, um, we're being friendly with them. We got. Um, a few new guys and obviously the underclassmen, but uh, we're, we have a good team bond right now. Head coach Mark Sanborn enters his fourth season as Hiller's head coach. Uh, everything's going well so far. Uh, we've had really good energy at practice, um, getting a lot of guys involved uh, in a lot of the drills trying to get as many guys reps as possible. 
And I think this year is kind of unique with the extended preseason where we have four scrimmages. So trying to get as many people understanding the offense, defense, special teams, some of the drills that we're doing. Um, and then we'll just kind of uh, evaluate throughout the next few weeks and the scrimmages that we have. Looks like a good amount of new faces out there. Uh, and a, maybe a kind of a younger team this year. Uh, how's the chemistry looking? And how are the new guys looking? Yeah, I think the chemistry is growing every day. The, the more time that these guys spend together, they're getting closer and closer. Um, I think we have a, a good amount of returners. Um, and then we have a junior class. Um, some of them played last year, but a really deep junior class with a lot of depth in it. So um, I think it'll be a good mix of experience. And then uh, some younger kids who had really valuable reps last year on the JV team and just kind of figuring out where they're going to fill in on both sides of the ball. But um, everyone's working hard. Everyone's getting along with each other. Um, we're just trying to get better every day. Uh, so you got a scrimmage in uh, New Hampshire coming up. Uh, how did that matchup happen? So they're coming down to us. Um, we were looking uh, for that that week one scrimmage, and I happened to look at some of the postings uh, up in New Hampshire, and I saw that Goffstown needed one. I reached out to the coach. Uh, he said, we'll gladly come down to you. So uh, they're coming down to us this Saturday, and I think it's good to scrimmage somebody that maybe you don't know too much about. Um, I think on their side, it'll be a good team bonding event as well, getting on the bus, taking a long trip. But uh, we're looking forward to seeing uh, see how Saturday goes and then uh, making the adjustments after that. All right, and any uh, goals for the season you'd like this team to accomplish? No, I think we, uh, I mean, we've scheduled some uh, some good good competition this year. Hopefully that will prepare us for our TVL schedule. Um, but our goal is just we have a lot of depth, a lot of guys that can play football, and the more guys that we can get in the field and uh, uh, the more roles that we can give out to all the guys, I think the better uh, we'll be overall as a team. And uh, lastly, it looks like you got some good captains this year. Can you talk about your captains? Yeah, they've been great. Uh, right since day one in the offseason when we started lifting in January, they've been at everything. Um, it starts with the captains. It starts with the seniors. Um, they've set the tone, um, especially like in the way that we've worked out in the offseason. Um, and then just translating it onto the practice field, uh, going between drills, um, going from segment to segment, and uh, again, bringing the team together. That culture is a really important thing for us. So they've done everything right. Hiller football plays their first regular season game in Wayland at 7 p.m. Friday, September 13th. Saturday morning cartoons are back. Every Saturday at 8 a.m., HCAM's Toon Time has an hour of classic cartoons, from Betty Boop to Superman to Popeye to Bugs Bunny and more. You'll see your old favorites and discover new ones. So tune in to Toon Time, Saturdays at 8, and start your weekend off with a laugh.